The Xbox Series X is not only the most powerful console, it will quickly become the best place to play most every game, much more powerful than the upcoming PS5, even rivaling most high-end gaming PCs on the market, and for the price, a fully powered, super fast full feature machine, and when it launches holiday 2020, it will change the way we look at console gaming. New testing for the Xbox Series X GPU has been noted, leaked, and confirmed this week after a string of leaked tests, insider information that has been redacted, and where there's smoke, there's fire. And right now, this fire is extremely hot, and for a lack of a better word, it's pure. I'm fortunate to be connected with hardware specialists behind the scenes, and right now, they are standing behind this information. The source is linked in the description, and you're here to get that information broken down and visually represented and grounded in how it affects you as a gaming fan and as a gamer. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe to the channel, and let's get into the specs of the Xbox Series X and the PS5. The website Tech Power Up posted brand new benchmark and GPU testing which included the upcoming PS5 and the Xbox Series X hardware, which gave us an insight and confirmation of the rumors and leaks of the past few months about next generation consoles. Many would rather wait to hear official confirmation from Sony and Microsoft about the new consoles. Those excited for bits of news for next generation are anticipating the latest numbers under the hood of the PS5 and the Xbox. After all, these machines will run our games moving forward and enhancing games we already bought. And the massive majority do not buy a new console or hardware just for a specific few games or exclusives. This is where Microsoft has poised the Xbox Series X as the most powerful console and the best place to play most every game. I say that with confidence because this Xbox will easily rival most big budget powerhouse PCs, especially in price even if the console launched for just over 500 but that's for another video. I need to get that disclaimer out of the way because a lot of people are going to say something about the games, but you're here for the specs, and here they are. The Xbox Series X is as implied, rumored, and speculated to be indeed a 12 teraflop console. Specifically, a 12.19 teraflop monster according to the testing, with the estimated 12 number being targeted. It is built on current generation RDNA 2.0, from AMD with hardware accelerated ray tracing cores built in. It has 14.5 million transistors all housed on a 350 millimeter squared chipset, much bigger than the PS5. There are 3,584 shader units for compute shading and the data shows 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, but we know from more comprehensive sources that the Xbox has likely 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. This is further supported by the PS5's data showing just 8 gigabytes, where it is likely 12 to 16. Finally, the Xbox Series X is showing 56 compute units, which brings the calculation back to 12 teraflops. All of this information is very promising for a console made to play thousands of huge AAA games. The Xbox Series X is comparable to a current RTX 2080 Ti GPU, a $1,200 desktop card. I know that sounds very unbelievable and many games will run similarly on lower cards, but right now the numbers and data put the Series X at a 2080 Ti. If you're feeling especially threatened as a PC gamer and owner of a $1000 plus rig, but the capability is a big measurement of power and expect some massive AAA games to rival the big cards in many ways. Comparing it to the PS5, it is strikingly apparent that Sony is pushing for a budget next generation console. Power was painfully important to Sony and PlayStation fans for much of the PS4 generation. As we know that almost all of the games we play each season are available on the competing console or PC. The PS5 is built on RDNA 1.0 architecture, which suggests that Sony has favored price over performance by pushing to utilize brute force software and hardware hybrid ray tracing. This is a smart move for Sony to keep the PS5 affordable as the suggested $400 price point. As long as ray tracing does not compromise performance, bringing frame rates under 60 or capping them at 30 FPS to favor visuals and lighting. The PS5 is a 9.216 teraflop GPU built around 10.3 million transistors on a 251 millimeter squared SOC. 
smaller, cooler, and hopefully quieter than the PS4 and PS4 Pro. There are 2300 shader units compared to the Xbox Series X 3500 and 36 compute units in line with the PS4 Pro of 2016 but with newer architecture. The PS5 was benchmarked against current desktop GPUs and comes in around the power of an AMD Radeon 7, a $550 card. The Xbox Series X compared against its closest competitor, the RTX 2080 Ti. Each of these metrics comparing the Xbox Series X to the PS5, the Xbox overall is some 44% more powerful and faster than the PS5 for what should be $100 more for the Xbox. My last video where I reported on the PS5 likely being $400 and the Xbox Series X being $500. A majority of comments reminded me that PlayStation fans would rather spend the extra $100 to afford the visuals and performance they would get if they bought an Xbox. Another common complaint is that many would rather go with the PS5 just because games matter to them the most. Truth be told that the majority and even the hardcore do not buy a console solely on the prospect of a handful of exclusive games. There are a few flaws with this approach. Number one, Sony has consistently delivered incredible first-party content over the past decade, and Microsoft has as well, except for the past few years. Xbox Game Studios has secured the Xbox platform to deliver several big games each year starting in 2020, and both Xbox and PlayStation are going to be pushing hard to make the console stand above the crowd with power, features, services, and games. Now, as far as services go, Sony is positioned to soon offer their biggest first-party games on multiple devices through PS Now, and soon, yeah, natively on PC. You may not believe it, and if you're a massive fanboy, you may not like it. But if you're a true gamer, you'll accept it, and you'll like it. Power is critically important to the console, just as much as it is important to developers and gamers. Gaming has been on a steep climb in visual fidelity, photorealism and interactivity with high-end monitors and now UHD TVs. Developers need that headroom to make their games and dreams a reality. The Xbox One X is now the world's most powerful console currently and games like Metro Exodus, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Red Dead Redemption 2, they all looked and played best on the Xbox. Gears 5 is one of the generation's best looking games that's an Xbox game and it runs at 60 FPS on the X and shows that more power with your preferred console is important to your own experience. Don't concern yourself with the sales of a console, which one will sell the most, which one will be the most popular. Sony and Microsoft want to sell you the best way to play all of your games and right now the PS5 may be the cheapest place to play your games in the next generation. Until Microsoft officially confirms the Lockhart, a $300 PS5 competitor with a full next generation console, which we'll cover right here as soon as we get the benchmarks and confirmation. But trust me, Lockhart is real and on the shelf it will be a compelling price threat for the popular PS5 in holiday 2020. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is where I'm going to give you my personal take on the information since I like to leave the rest up to you, the viewer, during the main parts of the video. Now, I'm an Xbox-centric channel. I'm also a fan of tech and power behind these games that we love. I'm absolutely excited about Xbox putting priority on the power of the console as long as the console doesn't approach $600, and I truly don't think it will. At most, I think Microsoft may say something like $549, at E3 2020, but in a few weeks, I'm going to break down all of the known components in a video and we'll see what the Xbox Series X will really cost us at launch. My biggest concern is the talk about games. I'm not concerned about Microsoft's games. I have a lot of insight for Xbox Game Studios. I have a lot of faith in some of these developers. I will link a video at the end of this about the games because Xbox really does have a schedule that projects some 50 games over the next 5 or 6 years on the Xbox. The games are so important to me. I have a PS4 because I play 2-3 to three exclusives on that console every year. Exclusives can be kind of rare, but they are the big games that people boast about. I want Microsoft to push those big games. They are literally the only thing that is missing from the Xbox platform. As far as what I talked about with the specs, for an entire year I have been reporting on very similar numbers and since June 2019 I've been telling the 500,000 plus people that watch my channel every month that the Xbox would hold the power crown. 
Those numbers and specs will vary as things become finalized and production starts with the consoles in late spring. But be excited, next generation can be boiled down to even more games and most of them all running at 60 FPS. There is so much more to cover, but that will have to be done in future videos. If you like this one, let me know by hitting the thumbs up and subscribing. Many are starting to join the Patreon. Patreons get early access to videos and much more. The same goes for channel members that join here on YouTube. Add me on Xbox Live and Twitter at Cold Eastwood. You can message me there anytime if you have any questions about this information. Thanks for all your support. I'll see you in the comment section. Keep it clean there, and of course, be nice.